Hello, my name is Warren Reed, and this is OLT, European Fiction. I'd like to welcome you to another world-famous quick tip video clip. Today we're going to be talking about ro ro romanticism. Romanticism. Romanticism is not easy to define. And so I'm going to take it in four steps. First, I'm going to tell you why it's not easy to define. I'm going to tell you what it isn't. I'm going to tell you about the forces that shaped it. And then I'm going to tell you about the six parts that make up the general idea of romanticism. Let's begin. Romanticism is not easy to define because it occurred in different countries at different rates and of course each author put his or her own individual spin in their work. So uh, German Romanticism is a little bit different from French Romanticism which is different from English Romanticism in varying degrees. We can say that Romanticism started at around the late 1780s and lasted till about the 1850s, but uh, some people think that maybe it continues today. We'll discuss that a little bit at the very end. Okay, Romanticism is not the same as the medieval romance, which we discussed earlier in this course. Okay, you may remember about the romance. This is where the courtly love came from. Some of our ideas about romance come from this. Okay, you know, like the fact that you might die for your love, or I'd kill for one of your smiles, you know, or you die for your principles, or whatever. Those kind of, you know, really strong feelings come out of the medieval romance. The second thing is the forces that shaped Romanticism. Now, if you read the course materials, the author describes Romanticism as a struggle with revolutionary forces, or a movement. What movement is that? That movement is capitalism. Capitalism changed society. Um, what was society like before capitalism? Well, you would buy something from the guy who made it, the actual craftsman, normally. Okay. Second of all, uh, the nobles and the king, they spent a lot of money supporting the arts. However, the style of art at the time, in that, that period, the late 18th century, was neoclassicalism. And neo means new. Classicalism refers to the classics. Okay, what are the classics? No, it's not like the 50s hits. No. It refers to the Greek and Roman texts, like the Iliad, which we also discussed. Texts by Homer, you know, the ancient Greeks, the Romans, those, those works. So all art had to be based on these uh, old Roman and Greek styles, and the form was very strict and also the content was very strict. So you have the king spending money, but uh, you had to work in a tight, confined way. Capitalism comes and changes the social order, okay? It brings, what, factories. Now it's no longer the craftsman working away on the one item that he sells to you, but you go to a shop and you buy some product made in a factory by who knows where, who and where, okay? and. Um, the, the craftsman ends up being a, a piece of machinery in the factory. The bonds of community also were weakened as people you know, went to the cities to find work. Does that sound familiar? I bet it does. Well, it happens now even around the world. So, and then the cities develop, these big ugly cities, you know. And then, you know, the question arises, am I a man or am I a machine? You know, we start to wonder. I'm part machine. The Romantics then struggled against the rules and order of neoclassicalism, but then they also struggled against the harsh realities of the capitalist world. That brings us to part three. What are the elements of Romanticism? Well, the first one is nature is important. The Romantics felt that the world of the factory in the city uh, dehumanized a person. And so th the mind and the soul and the body could be refreshed in nature. And they also felt that childhood was, was the ideal state and innocence because you were more open to inspiration and you weren't corrupted by 
you know, all these, these capitalist ideals, which are so evil. evil. That's a joke, by the way. The second thing is they were influenced by the past. They looked to the medieval times for inspiration. This is where we get the influence of the romance. They appreciated the exotic, that's point three. An appreciation of the exotic. What is the exotic? The exotic is anything basically that is not from your region in the world. Something that is rare is exotic. They liked the irrational. What's the irrational? It's like things that are not logical or not entirely logical. Uh, why do you suppose that is? Well, if you think before they were creating under strict, strict rules. Rules were made to be broken. They also liked the horrifying or the shocking. Romanticism, this period from the 1780s to the 1850s, saw the beginnings of the Gothic romance. What is that? If you've, have you heard of vampires, zombies, werewolves, Frankenstein's monsters? These kind of things came about during this time. Why? It's, I think it's another reaction against the strict rules and for, about form and content. Um, also, society maybe at that time for the romantics was very dull and boring, and so you needed a little shock, a little shock, a little, a little scariness to, to wake you up and give you some electricity, you know, in energy in your life. This whole thing about the exotic, let me just also say, you know, this was in the time when uh, colonialism was really starting to take off, and so people were getting in contact with um, cultures and people from around the world, okay? And so, you know, the exotic is from somewhere else. It's like interesting, but also a little bit dangerous because maybe it could influence and, and threaten our social order, you see? For example, in, in Dracula, the vampire, he's from Eastern Europe, on the very edge of the wilderness, you know, far from civilization as, you know, Europe would have it. So the further you get from the center, the, the city centers of Europe, the more exotic things become, and the more alluring, interesting, but also maybe dangerous. The last part, the fifth part is, inspiration the romantics really supported the inspiration of the individual you know and this is where we get uh, you know the one person striking out alone or shunning society no i don't want to be like everyone else i want to be me let me be me you know this comes this is a romantic ideal and it brings me to the point does uh, romanticism live on today Yes, I think it does. We have this idea that you can, you know, one person can do it alone. And that's also a, a capitalist idea. The capitalism has adopted an entrepreneur is a romantic hero because he or she, you know, is taking a chance. They're striking out, you know, they're going to do something or be something, you know, any of these kind of, you know, ideas that yes, you can by yourself. This comes from romanticism. Romanticism. Even I sometimes can't say it. I get so excited, you know. It's a great, great, great. I'm so passionate about romanticism. Anyway, these are just my little conjectures about it. Uh, if you have your own ideas about it, or you have questions, suggestions, something I missed, uh, please send me an email. It's right here, here, and here. Or maybe it's here, or maybe it's here. So please. Keep in touch. That's it for me. This is it for romanticism. I'll see you next time for another awesome, world famous, internationally discussed. Find it on Facebook, on Twitter. OLT 3 to 1 European Fiction Quick Tip Video Clip.